Hi, I'm Josh Ackman with Park Industries Customer Service Department. On this video, we're going to be talking about wet garnet and if your garnet is getting wet at your cutting head there. The first thing you do want to check before you get into the actual cutting head is check your garnet flow. Make sure your, your mini hopper is releasing the proper amount of flow down to your cutting head. Um, we do have a video on that if you want to watch that also on how to check that. Otherwise, on 30 horsepower pumps, you're looking for 56 cc's in 30 seconds. And on 50 or 60 horsepower pumps, you're looking for 108 cc's in 30 seconds. You do not want to go too much above that if you do have to air, air a little bit on the lower side. So. The next step would be is if your garnet flow is good getting to your cutting head, you would want to check um, going to our cutting head here. So if we're, we are getting water backing up into here yet, we might have a couple different problems in our head here. So I am going to start by breaking this loose. Obviously this is just a test demo, so it's not as tight as what you'd find on your machine. And when you ever spin these, you do not want to spin the bottom part. Hold that bottom part straight and spin the swivel part of the swivel adapter. Once we have our assembly off, we're just going to dismantle this and take a look here. Set our nozzle down, our orifice, and then we have our mixing chamber left. So we obviously want to inspect all the parts here, but the key parts are these three here right now. So we'll just work our way over. Um, Nozzle, just make sure everything looks fine, looks open, uh, no hairline cracks or anything like that. If you are seeing that, you do want to replace your nozzle. Same with mixing chamber. If we look in there, if the camera can see that, everything's nice and pretty smooth. It's not as smooth as the outside, but if there's any bigger flakes hanging off it, um, hairline cracks in it, anything like that. Some of it may be very hard to see and sometimes you may just have to replace it um, and just try it and see if it works for you. Otherwise, we're down to our orifice. Um, this is a ruby orifice. You may be able to see the red ruby inside there. If you, do, if you are running a ruby orifice and you cannot see that it is red there, your orifice is blowing out and I would definitely start with that. Diamond orifices, you do have to hold them up to the light and look, um, and look around a little bit. You'll see the shimmer inside it. Um, diamond orifices are a lot harder to see. So once we inspected all those parts, went through them, then it's the assembly process and that is also key. So everybody's a little different how they assemble these. It all depends on what you prefer as long as you get a good end result. But I like to start with dropping my orifice in. So my, I can see my ruby on this one and the flat side like that is facing down. It, they do have a little bit of a lip wedge that they catch on there. So I'm just gonna hold my ruby orifice tight here and my mixing chamber is next. You want the small hole going up towards the top of the cutting head. Bigger hole needs to line up with my garnet. On the opposite side, we have a little flat ledge there that that's what the set screw sets up against there to keep it from spinning inside the head and blocking your garnet flow. So I'm just going to carefully slide that in there. Okay. 
and then just make sure my the big hole lines up really nice with the and is centered on the through my garnet line hole there. Then I'm just going to lightly set my nozzle in there. I'm not going to push too hard. Before I put that nut on, I should, before my mixing chamber spins, just lock that down just to keep that mixing chamber from spinning. And I am going to keep my nozzle down a little bit and not push tight up against the everything quite yet because I'm just holding it right now, so it is a little loose. Now, once I have it pre-assembled there, I'm going to slide that on, holding my bottom side tight so that I do not spin this at all. With this, this part down here is not spinning at all. So if we spin this on top of that orifice, you can damage your orifice. Um, make sure this is just our test demo. So make sure we put blue goop on there. On any threads on these stainless steel parts, apply blue goop too. We do not have it on here so because it's just the test demo. So I'm going to hold that tight and here, make sure, try not to spin at all on that, the bottom side. And I'm going to just lock that down in there. So that swivel adapter is pushing down tight onto that orifice now. Now, I don't want any gaps between my orifice mixing chamber and nozzle here. So now we need to make sure we eliminated any gaps there. I'm going to lightly hold up on my nozzle, let that nut drop off, and I will just loosen that set screw for that mixing chamber, double checking inside here that everything lines up nice yet with the big hole. And then I'm going to slide my collet down so it's not pushing up on that at all. And I'm going to just make sure I'm pushing that nozzle tight up against there so it's seating all three of those parts together tight. Once you're holding that and that's nice and tight, you can set your set screw here just to keep that mixing chamber from um, spinning. Once again on here, have your blue goop if you um, if there's not enough on there yet. And then I'm just going to thread my nozzle or my nut up here to hold that nozzle tight. Once you have that all on and that's all locked tight, we can put our O-ring back on to keep any garnet and debris out of our threads. And then after that, you can put your nozzle flag on and that should be good to go. There is one other thing that you can uh, check that causes wet garnet. The last thing would be the thimble filter. And the thimble filter is inside the bullet here. So you will have to disconnect your high pressure line We'll loosen that up. Now notice how my head will drop down because the bullet is what holds that head tight into place. So this, this is what we call the bullet and the thimble filter, we do not have one in our test demo, but will be inside there. It is a small filter about the size of a tip of a pen that will be in there. And that catches if most people only run them when they're running diamond orifices, but that catches if there's any debris in your high pressure lines, catches that before it gets to your orifice so you don't destroy your orifice. 
So if you are running that, that can cause your wet garnet also. Now it is important how you tighten up everything with the bullet and the valve body here. That can be really critical. Um, we also do have a video on that that you guys can watch also for tightening that up. So just a quick recap here of everything it can be. Um, it can be too much garnet flow getting to your cutting head here. It can be your thimble filter, or it can be orifice, mixing chamber, or nozzle. Um, one other thing to keep in mind, um, we do have another video on the um, on-off valve here. If your on-off valve up in the valve body here is leaking and you are getting some water dripping from your nozzle, that can cause um, wet garnet in there. That will get the tip of that line wet right there and cause it to just build up and then um, it'll even get a little wetter and ca cause your wet garnet issue. So make sure you double check that also. As always, give us a call at our customer service department if you have any questions and we'd be glad to answer them. Thank you. Thanks.